In this video, we'll learn how to analyze the tonal range of an image in Photoshop using the histogram panel. Tonal range is one of the most fundamental properties of a visual image, and understanding it is key to your ability to make, edit, and evaluate images. To illustrate, we can look at the same image with two different tonal ranges. In Photoshop, I've opened teacher1.jpg and teacher2.jpg from this week's demo files and switched my window arrangement by clicking Window, Arrange, to Up Vertical from the menu bar. The tonal range of an image is based on the brightness level of the darkest value and the lightest value. The image on the left has a narrow tonal range. The darkest value is a dark gray, there's no black. In fact, the entire image is gray since even the lightest values are a light gray and not white. Overall, there's a relatively low amount of contrast in the image, and it tends to look flat. The image on the left has a wider tonal range. The darkest value is black. Most of the values are mid-tone gray, with some small amounts of white, which is the lightest value. Relatively speaking, this image is higher in contrast and tends to look like it has greater depth. Unfortunately, we can't be so simplistic as to just say wide tonal range is always great and narrow tonal range is always bad. But obviously, these images have different qualities in the way that they feel to look at. Working with grayscale images like this, where we have two different versions side by side to compare, it's really easy to notice the differences in tonal range. But it can be much more difficult in other situations. For example, working with a color image or looking at the viewfinder image on your camera or phone when photographing a scene. Luckily, Photoshop has a tool called the histogram, which can take a lot of the guesswork out of analyzing the tonal range of an image. The histogram is also the basis for making edits to the tonal range of an image, so knowing how it works can really give you a leg up. Let's start by looking at teacher2.jpg. I'll click on its tab to make sure that's the active file. Then I'll bring up the histogram panel by clicking Window, Histogram from the menu bar. Then I'll click on the Stack menu in the upper right and click Expanded View. And lastly, I'll make sure my channel is set to RGB. What we see in the histogram is basically a graph of an image's tonal range. Along the bottom of the graph is the brightness spectrum from black on the far left to midtones in the middle and highlights on the right. The vertical axis represents the relative number of pixels at any of those brightness levels. The fact that this graph spans all the way across horizontally tells me that in this image, the darkest values are black and the lightest values are white. The spikes tell me that there's a large concentration of darks and one of whites, then a smaller amount of midtones. That makes sense based on looking at the image with the dark hair and the light background. Now let's compare to teacher1.jpg. I'll click on its tab to make it the active file. And notice how the histogram has changed. The graph is now crunched into the center of the brightness spectrum, and that makes sense, since the darkest value here is a dark gray, and the lightest is a light gray. There's no white or black in the image. Notice, though, how I still have the same two peaks. They're just in the midtone range. Starting off with grayscale images to talk about tonal range makes things easier since we can talk about just brightness value and not hue, but tonal range applies to color images as well. Let's close out of those two files. I'm going to open up one last file with a version of that same image, this time in color and a little bit lower resolution. This one I'm opening isn't in the demo files because I'm going to do something to it that you shouldn't actually do, but will hopefully help illustrate how the histogram works. My plan here is to organize the pixels in this image from darkest to lightest, just like the histogram would. So I'll start by stacking up all the darkest pixels, then the midtones, and finally the highlights. Now I'm organizing this by eye, and it's a little bit tedious, so of course I'm making mistakes that Photoshop wouldn't but I can still see those same peaks that the Photoshop histogram was giving me. And if I bring up the histogram for this image, you can see it's fairly close. 
Okay, that's an overview of how to analyze the tonal range of an image in Photoshop using the histogram panel.